help Fujian flood affected residents to move into the newly completed Dai homes. Over a thousand people in the slum area collect garbage in the nearby landfill to strive for a living. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Maggie Tai. Thank you for joining us. Last July, Fujian's Shanchang County was hit with flooding and Suji came to help in the immediate aftermath, as well as began to build Dai homes for the disaster survivors. It's been three months after the fact and the survivors are able to move into new home before the Lunar New Year holiday thanks to Suji's effort. Celebration and cheer the villagers have been waiting for this day. Shunchan Siji Dai Village was completed 100 days after the groundbreaking ceremony, and 135 families happily move into their brand new home. This place is close to the elementary school and easy access to transportation. There are many cars here, so the kids are safe. Floods submerged homes underwater last July, and Siji volunteers came to survey the damages and also gave out material aid to help. Later in October, plans for a Da'ai village commenced, and now after three months and before the Lunar New Year, disaster survivors can live in their new home to celebrate the holiday. It's nice here. I'm at ease. I don't have to be afraid anymore. It's wonderful. I dreamed of this my whole life. The house is great and the roads are clear. There are running water and electricity. The curtains and glass panels are installed already. It comes furnished and I just need to move in. How much better can it get? Each household receives 30 presents to warm their house, which includes food as well as necessities. These were prepared in the dark using cell phone lights as the volunteers hope to surprise the new homeowners the very next day. No matter how cold we are, it's not like them wishing for a warm home to live in, so we are warmed by our Dharma drawing. I'm so grateful you have given me so much. I know our goods come from kind-hearted donations, and it's how I was able to survive. This home also is from the love of others. These tears stem from gratitude. Villagers prepare to eat the specialty food they enjoy for the Lunar New Year and send well wishes to one another, as they know this new year has started off with a good vibe. In other news, in Liancheng, Fujian, Siji is signing a revitalization plan for the rural villages to continue the support from three years ago, ensuring the village life is alive and thriving. Siji Gary Sipian, 80-year-old grandpa Ho, lives alone, so does 76-year-old grandma Jan. Their company buys their TV sets every day. The volunteers visited them and made them happy. Let's follow their visits. Gulangyu is a famous tourist site, but some residents are lonely. Tsuji volunteers come as promised to visit Grandma Jiang. She suffers from a stroke, so she is a mobile. The volunteers help her wash her hair. <laughs> Fu Su Fang uses her hair washing skills that it makes the grandma feel very good. It also helps the volunteer to overcome her difficulty. After so many years, I have never truly contacted our care recipient sincerely, so this is a chance for me to wash her hair, and I feel quite happy. Mr. Tsai has a mild mental disability, and the volunteers always clean his house every time. I remember when I came here the first time, I was a little scared because I had never done anything like this. After a few more times, I felt like we were like a family. When I saw him happy after I had cleaned him, 
and he looked so comfortable after he put on his clothes, we felt happy too. You should change the time of your visit by coming more often. It's too long to come once a month. I like your coming because I feel happy. Constant care and visit can help the seniors feel loved and warm. In our next report, we will meet a dedicated recycling volunteer who has been collecting plastic bags at the market. For three years, Tiji Volunteers Fang Jing Zhao has been collecting plastic bags from the store owners. In the beginning, some store owners were skeptical, but after a while, they were touched by her efforts to protect the environment. Now, all the store owners support her with actions. Going from store to store to recycle plastic bags, Fang Jingjiao is protecting the environment. She piles up the collected plastic bags in the back seat of her motorcycle, and they're higher than a person. I carried a recyclable bag to our recycling station to reduce the amount of garbage. Plastic bags and styrofoam will create black smoke when burned. It is bad for the air. Fang Jingjiao has been collecting plastic bags in the market every day for three years. I have to rush over there to collect recyclables at noon every day before the peddlers close their stands. The garbage trucks will carry them away by 1.30, so we need to rush and collect the recyclables. Sister Jingjiao has touched the store owners. Now they also separate the garbage and recyclables, so Tsuji sisters in our district are really touching. When Fang started collecting recyclables, some store owners were skeptical. However, as she persevered, the store owners eventually support her with actions. At the Penang Tsuji Dialysis Center in Malaysia, a nurse, Wang Pei Hui, once had to give up her dream to become a nurse but due to her family's disapproval. However, when she discovered Tsuji's nursing scholarship, she seized the opportunity to achieve her dream and safeguard the health of patients. Being a nurse is the goal she had since her youth. However, the journey to chase her dream was once interrupted when she graduated from high school. My brother doesn't encourage me to be a nurse because they need to rotate shifts and also do night shifts. He thought that night shifts are too exhausting. After being a kindergarten teacher for two years, she accidentally found that Tsuji offers scholarship for nursing degrees. Also, she discovered that the Tsuji Dialysis Center doesn't do shift rotations. After getting her family's approval, she entered the nursing profession. I saw my patients recovering gradually, or some getting a bit better. It's very satisfying for me. The experience of teaching events and visitations have made her cherish the connections between people more. She knows how to hang out with people or sometimes she uses different ways to solve a problem, some ways we might not have thought of. We need to let people know how to take care of their kidneys. Why are there so many people having kidney problems? We need to know how to care for it because prevention is more important than treatment. When you need to treat it, it's already too late. A dialysis center is a lifelong commitment. Therefore, we hope that people can start to take care of their kidneys before they are ill. She is dedicated to promoting kidney protection and determined to safeguard the public's health. Just like her persistence to achieve her goal, she will never give up. The economy of Cambodia has been developing fast, but there is also a widening gap between the rich and the poor. In the capital of Cambodia, Phnom Penh, there is a slum area where more than a thousand people make a living picking up garbage from the only landfill in the area. Follow our report as we document one family there and understand their way of living. Seeing lots of people in cars on the streets, 
We have come to the capital of Cambodia, Phnom Penh. We're now getting on a taxi in Cambodia. They're called Tuk Tuk. We're heading to suburbs of Phnom Penh. On the large roads in the city, going to the small alleys, and then traveling on the yellow earthland, we're not heading to any tourist site. Instead, we're going to Dankar Landfill. One can see endless garbage and also smell the foul odor of trash and waste materials. Being the only landfill in Phnom Penh, it has been in use for 10 years. It is larger than Da'an Forest Park in Taipei, and it is the second garbage mountain in the area. The first one has been closed as it has reached its maximum capacity. There are at least 700 families who live near the landfill. The place filled with garbage is where the residents make money as well as call home. The Tashi Meadow House is the shelter of the resident own arm and her family of seven. There are two floors, but the space is less than 10 square meters. The family's kitchen rooms and storage space is all here. One cannot stand up straight and walk here. I heard that picking garbage can make a lot of money, so I decided to move from Phnom Penh. When I first moved here, I pushed a cart and scavenged from garbage mountain to the market. My children also went with me. Every day, 3,000 tons of garbage is dumped here. We will usually avoid the garbage, but they see this as treasure. The family members will take turns to pick garbage from the landfill. To save money, they make the linen bags used to carry the recyclables. We make this to be sold. We can give them to my children who pick garbage. They use one in two to three days. If we don't make them, Buying three bags will cost us three U.S. dollars. It is his turn to go pick garbage today. The 10-year-old boy changes his clothes after getting off from school and putting on his rain boots before taking off. He's holding the linen bag in one hand and the iron hook in the other hand. Aiming at his targets, he drags in the items he wants. If there are new discarded items, he cannot miss them. He's very agile at picking garbage because he has been picking garbage since he was eight years old. A kilogram of aluminum cans or copper wires costs 80 cents. Sometimes they can be sold for 12 cents. We have to pick aluminum cans for three days before selling them. We make about 20 US dollars each time. Compared to the past, she's more fortunate now. She said that when she raised chicken in the past, she could make 134 US dollars a month. But now she can make 200 US dollars a month. As long as she can earn money, the poor living environment does not matter. Being uneducated is also not a concern. Some residents only allow their children to complete elementary school. They stop going to school because they think they can make a living by picking garbage. Cambodia City volunteers started caring for them since three years ago. They also tell the residents about the importance of education, but it is not easy. They are old in age, and they have a sense of inferiority if they are to study with other children. They grew up picking garbage and they smell. They face a lot of difficulties. Concept can be changed through time. However, if they do not have electricity, how can they start reading after it gets dark? Can you imagine how people have to wear headlights and live? When the headlights no longer have electricity, one needs to buy batteries. One battery costs 40 cents. One headlight costs between 1.5 to 1.7 U.S. dollars. Even less than two U.S. dollars is a burden. Therefore, city volunteers have delivered solar panels to the residents in last August. The solar panels can bring light to the households, and the volunteers care worn up their hearts. <laughs>
The impoverished residents live in the forgotten corners of society. This landfill is expected to reach its maximum capacity soon. By then, there will be a third landfill. These residents will also follow the trace of garbage and look for new homes. Continue her island-wide tour, Dharma Master Zheng Yan has come to Taitung. She has certified the new Tsiji Commissioners and hold a year-end blessing ceremony. The Master has encouraged her more than 300 disciples to church the affinities with Tsiji and upholds the grand vows to benefit the public. Coming from an impoverished family, Xu Liansong has always wanted to make money and be rich. As a result, he lost himself and led a wayward life. His wife, Chen Rui Huang, has suffered from poor health. She did not have a going life until she came into contact with Ziji. Then her life changed for the better. I invested too much money into my business and therefore my family faced a lot of pressure. I'm grateful that the master has created the Ziji world. She inspired me when I was lost. I'm grateful to the Master's teachings, which gave me a lot of strength. Therefore, I can lead a more meaningful life in the remaining lifetime. In Taitung's year and blessing ceremony, city volunteers gathered and shared their life stories. They also put on a sutra adaptation, showing how they vowed with sincerity. Taidong City volunteers vow to the Master they will take the Dharma teachings to heart and nurture their Western life. As the volunteers light up the lamps, they also make the sincere vows that they will continue to benefit the public and spread great love. Tsiji Taman Molek Liaison Office in Malaysia hosted a distribution event before Lunar New Year. 36 care recipients came with family and friends to enjoy a festive celebration. Let's join them there. Volunteers are busy making the decorations and in another area, the chefs are showing their singing talent. In the kitchen, volunteers are preparing festive meals. At the Taman Molek Tsiji Liaison Office, volunteers welcome arriving guests. Today we prepare food from healthy materials. The presentation is also important so that the food can both look good and taste pleasant. The hot pot's broth is very important. We have oats, Jacob's tear powder and some grain powder in it, so it's very nutritious. <laughs> The first thing is to take a picture for all the family members who came to the event. Volunteers quickly rush to a photo shop to print the photos to present them before the conclusion of the event. The care recipients really have a chance to take a good photo, so we want to give them a larger photo, which will be heartwarming pictures of the family. However, if they didn't print it out, then it won't be as memorable. I'm very touched because Tsiji has treated us all like family and gives us very warm care. I'm very happy that everyone can unite together. There was also a volunteer who shared his story of changing from a care recipient to being part of Tsiji. I was also a care recipient myself. I hope that our care recipients can join Tsiji to be volunteers like me and enlighten their wisdom. With children's joyful singing, the venue is filled with gratefulness and blessing, giving the new year a warm beginning. Now we're going to take a final look back at Tsiji's major events that took place in November of 2019. In November, Tsiji Philippines celebrated its 25th anniversary.
At the same time, the volunteers were also conducting aid distributions on the island of Mindanao, which was hit by three earthquakes in October. We are very happy for all the help coming in from the national agencies, from the international um, organization like the Chichu Foundation. In November, Suji held a large-scale free clinic in Cambodia. Suji first brought aid to Cambodia in 1994. For 25 years, Suji has been providing continued support to the country. <laughs> Time passes, but memories remain. Jiyo 快快抬起主,這是我們本位是,他們要苦,整理我們的苦。<laughs> the annual Joho Baru Year and Blessing Ceremony has completed and over a thousand people participated. Behind the scenes, more than 400 volunteers work hard to prepare for the event. They enjoy to serve as they gain blessing and joy from it. Take a look and see you next time.